Good morning, welcome to our service of Holy Communion this morning. It's good to be in my parish church for a change, which you are indeed my parish church, so it's yeah. good to be here. I don't know who I am, I'm Vernon Ross, I'm Archdeacon of West London Furness and Acting Archdeacon of Carlisle. It's church, so we got notices before the service. Um, Saturday the 30th of September, so at the end of Fluke for a Band, um, are doing a concert tickets, cost £10, and they're available from the Cockle Store, Fluteworth Square, Cabin, and the Cabin Car. Also, next week, I believe there is a parish hall. Parish hall starts at 9 30. Uh, the Heft. The Heft. No, well, Heft. Grand Pine Newton. 9 30. Over. 9.30 the heft, and then we go down 10 o'clock and just have it come up. And, we, and then survivor's tea, and even people who haven't come on the walk are welcome to come to the survivor's tea. But, I don't know, what would it be, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, they're probably back. Anyway, find the heft and have a walk. <laughs> yeah. Let's begin with a, a moment of quiet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our opening hymn is hymn number 140. Hymn number 140. <laughs> Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, 
by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may learn to love you and worthy magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. The Lord Lord has has mercy. mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our name in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own individual fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in unity of love, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand to sing the glory. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 50, part of the story of Joseph and his brothers 
in Egypt. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. And here ends the Old Testament reading. The second reading is taken from Romans chapter 14 verses 1 to 12, a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarrelling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat most must not despise those who abstain. And those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honour of the Lord. And those who eat, eat in honour of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honour of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. This is the word of the Lord. Stand to sing in number 145. Good Christians all rejoice and sing in number 145. <laughs>
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and he could not pay. His Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payments to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him all his debt. But the same slaves he went out came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they were so angry they went and reported it to their lord then his lord summoned him and said to him you wicked slave i forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as i had mercy on you and in his anger his lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So, my Heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Father, may your word be our rule, your spirit our teacher, your glory our aim. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Please sit. Well, it's good to be here this morning, and you know how it is, you read one thing and several other things start running through your mind. Well, when I read this bit of Matthew's Gospel, two contrasting events popped into my mind, both of them from longer ago than I really want to admit. One was before we had children, and one was in the early 2000s. The first one was that Francesca and I were babysitting for friends, something we enjoyed doing as they had a large TV, we didn't have a TV at the time, they had good books, nice wine and two friendly Siamese cats. What's not to like about a warm evening in? I ring on the doorbell and their eldest daughter answers it and immediately she says, where's my present? Much to the embarrassment of her mother. It was her birthday and all day people had popped around with presents. After all, Why else would anyone be coming round? At the age of five, this child was into the law of materialism. You're only worth what you can give. The second incident was a lot later. We were about to go on sabbatical to to a church in New York. It was exciting. We were doing it on a tight budget. We have managed it by grants to sort it out so a pair of us could go and then have a rough tour of New England before we flew back on the tightest of budgets you can imagine. Anyway, a member of the congregation, who was a local businessman, came up to me after a service with a large brown envelope. Being into spy novels at the time, I was quite excited. He said, don't open it now, but when you get home, it's for your sabbatical. It was heavy, so I thought, it's a book. Well, when we got home, I opened it, and it was full of US dollars, a thousand dollars. Back in 2006, it was quite a bit of money. 
I've seen my spiritual director the following day as pre-arranged and told him about this and how I would have to return the envelope and the contents with a letter saying thank you but no thanks. His reply has stayed with me to, till today. This is what grace looks like, learn to accept it. It was then, and still has been the only time in our lives, when we didn't have a budget, when we went away on holiday. It was an absolute blessing. We struggle to accept grace, don't we? It's hard. We like to give something in return. As a colleague said to me, only this week when I bought him a sandwich because he hadn't had any dinner, I owe you one. She no, we didn't. But we do like that, don't we? We like to repay. We don't like to be in debt to anyone. But grace doesn't work like that. Even if we can't give in return, that's not the point. God's grace is given generously and unconditionally. So to our parable. I love Jesus' parables. The rabbinical hyperbole in them is amusing. His sense of humour is there all the way through. From the beginning to the end, there are challenging punchlines. It's so easy to remember, yet so hard to live out. As the late Queen said, love your neighbour as yourself is so easy to say and so hard to do. Peter comes to Jesus with a question. He's trying to do his own analysis. How many times does he need to forgive someone? There has to be a cut-off point. And Jesus, as he often does, answers the question with a parable. There is a king, God, and two servants. Take a pick as to which one you would like to be. One servant is in serious debt, mega debt, beyond his means to repay. He is well and truly stuck. His only hope is that his master is in a good mood and will write off some of it or give him more time to pay. Brackets, which of course he can't because the debt is far too big. The logical course is for the king to sell the man and assets into slavery and get some of his money back. But the man pleads for clemency and the king the king does an astonishing thing, he wipes out the entire debt. How life-changing is that? It's better ringing. Winning pointless, isn't it? Having all the debt wiped out. Surely such generosity would lead not just to change in this man's circumstances, but change in this man's heart. The free man goes out and encounters someone who owes him a pittance but nevertheless can't afford to repay. What does the new liberated servant do? Answer, shows no mercy and throws his fellow servant into prison. When the king hears of this, he rescinds his generosity and throws the first person into prison. The whole point of this parable is simple. God is gracious and we, his servants, should be also. But are we? That's a rub, isn't it? It's a great story, but it asks several questions, which are, do we really value God's grace? Do we understand how much he has forgiven us, our debts, and debts that we cannot repay by our own means? We are morally and spiritually bankrupt. We've ignored God's will for our lives, and, not, and we're not living as he's designed us to live, and yet he forgives us. If you think I'm over this, just reflect on the mess that this country and the world is in right now. From racism and street violence, to environmental damage, to wars in Ukraine, Sudan and elsewhere, increasing gap between rich and poor, and very close to having our locks so polluted in Northern Ireland that the water is undrinkable and unlivable in. And do we not understand how generous God is to us? And do we celebrate God's generosity? Are we grateful that God doesn't major in a materialistic way that says, what will I get out of it if I forgive you? Be honest, we are in such debt to God that we cannot ever pay him back. God owes us nothing. We owe God everything. And yet it's God who gives. Do we live by that materialistic analysis or transactional analysis or by grace in other words, are we like the small child we were babysitting with her sister that night who only saw people for what she could get out of them 
Or have we learned to live by grace and be gracious in return? If you read, and I'm sure you do, all the later letters in the New Testament, James, Jude, Peter, for example, you realise that although we aren't saved by works, but by grace, we aren't saved without works as well. So grace is not an excuse to behave how we want to, but grace given so that we can behave properly is what God gives. So, will we change to become more like Jesus? Churches don't grow because they haven't got the right strategy. One big reason is that churches don't grow is that we've not learned to value grace to live that Christ-centered lives that grace freely given to us enables us to do. I want to end with a quote, not from a theologian, but from a pop star. He says this, Religion can be the enemy of God. It's often what happens when God, like Elvis, has left the building. A list of instructions where there was once conviction, dogma where once people just did it, a congregation led by a man where once they were led by the Holy Spirit, discipline replacing discipleship. It's mind blowing concept that the God who created the universe might be looking for company, a real relationship with people, but the thing that keeps me on my knees is the difference between grace and karma. I really believe we've moved out of the realm of karma and into one of grace. You see, at the centre of all religions is the idea of karma. You know, what you put in is what you get back. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Or in physics, every law has an e every force has an equal and opposite reaction. It's clear to me that karma is at the very heart of the universe. I'm absolutely sure of it. And yet along comes this idea called grace. To end all of that as you reap so you sow stuff. Grace defies reason and logic. Love interrupts. If you like, the consequences of your action, which in my case is very good news, because I've done some stupid stuff in the past. That stupid stuff is between me and God, but I'd be in big trouble if karma was going to finally be my judge. I'd be in deep, but I'm not saying the word. It doesn't excuse my mistakes, but I'm holding out for grace. I'm not holding out that Jesus took my sins on the cross because I know who I am and I hope I don't have to depend on my own religiosity. That's a quote by Bono of you too. So, may we become not only a people who freely accept God's grace, but value it so much that we live it out in practice, both as individuals and as communities of grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> so we stand to declare our faith in the grace, in God's grace. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of the heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from the light, true God from true God, begotten of God man, of one being with the Father, through being all things that were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and conscious Pilate. He suffered the death and was buried. On the third day he rose again with all the monsters of the He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, 
it has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and solid church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world after come. Amen. It's set on the altar track. Almighty God, we pray for our Church of England and especially for our churches here on the Cartmel Peninsula as we look to our leaders for inspiration. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of all, we pray for the victims of the terrible disasters in Morocco and Libya. For those whose homes have been destroyed and for the rescue services as they search for survivors. We pray too for those we know here at home who have died and for the bereaved that you will comfort and sustain them in their grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are ill, sad, lonely, depressed, or worried about the future. We pray that our leaders throughout the world will strive to find solutions to the worsening situation regarding refugees and the ruthless people who profiteer from their plight. We pray for the people of Ukraine in their ongoing struggle. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Lord of all, we pray for ourselves, our family, our friends, that we may indeed treat others as we would wish to be treated, as our faith and trust in you grows. Merciful Father, and set these hearts for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> The peace and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. And also with you. To offer one another a sign of peace. different everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now the next hymn, 143, 
has a tricky tune, I'm told, which you're going to hang it. And I believe the audience has volunteered, maybe you sing the first verse um, first, so they know, and then we start with the first verse once the organist has finished. So you're getting a bit of a music recital to start with. Right. Sin and death, as 
so we gladly thank you, the saints and angels, praising you and singing. <laughs>
receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given to you in his blood, which he shed. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but I will say the word, and I shall be found. We do not presume that Christ will share his hands of the Lord.
the Lord, the church, but at your mercy. And because our human frailty we can be not perfect. Keep us ever by thy help, all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, we give you thanks and praise that when, when we were so far off, you met us in your Son and the world of Son. Dying and living with the day of your love, he gave us the truth and the truth in the days of the world. May we be shared our Christ's body in the truth of life. We be free to stop through life to others. We be free to stop through life to the world. Keep us firm and firm in our sense of course, so we and all your children shall be free. And our Lord and Savior is the greatest of men, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with each one of you, all who you know and love today and for eternity. Amen. Amen. Good.